Hello. Today, I'm going to introduce to you the LE7, our integrating sphere. So what is an integrating sphere? An integrating sphere is basically a sphere that is coated white on the inside, and you shine light into it, and perpendicular to that direction, you have a light outlet um, that is then uniformly illuminated. So as you can see here, we have the out outlet of our integrating sphere. Inside here, we have a sphere. Yes, the whole thing doesn't look like it, but there is a sphere inside. We just need that housing to make it light proof for the various applications. Uh, so as you can see, we do have the light sources in there. They shine into the integrating sphere. And then we have um, a test chart here on the output side that is illuminated uniformly. So that's what it's designed for, illumination of test charts. Um, why do we need an illumination of a test chart, a transmissive test chart? So with a transmissive chart, you can get higher contrast levels. With a transmissive chart, in terms of color, for example, you can also get to wider color gamuts. So you can have more vivid colors than you can get with a reflective chart. And also, it's much easier to create a uniform output with a, an integrating sphere than to do that with a reflective chart. So in this case, if you want to calibrate cameras, do flat fielding, and these kind of things, you can use such a device and just put the device in front of it. So that's what an integrating sphere is used for. The LE7 works with a spectrally tunable light source. So in this case, we have 20 narrowband LEDs that can be activated in various combinations, and that way you can tune the spectrum of your LE7 to whatever you like. So you can use the same device for tungsten illumination, for daylight illumination, and you can select D50 or D65. It doesn't matter. Yeah, let me show you an example of uh, what the spectral distribution can look like. So this is illuminant A that we select, and um, then I can also um, use illuminant D50 or D65, so I can switch between those. And the interesting thing with the LE7 is you can not only generate those spectra on your computer and run those uh, with the connected computer. You can also download those spectra onto the device and you can use a little uh, keyboard here to select your illuminant that you've downloaded to the device. So you don't necessarily need a, a computer to run it. Okay, uh, what is the LE7 being used for? So one aspect is calibrating a camera. So, for example, if you have a camera like this with a very big lens, all the other devices that we offer, the, um, the cal devices, are too small um, on the output side. And therefore, we need a larger output, which we can get with the LE7. So, in that case, you just take your camera, you place it right in front of the LE7, and then you can do all different um, measurement aspects like flat fielding, white balance uh, correction and uh, measurement, defect pixels, um, and all these kind of, of things, including uh, determination of the spectral sensitivity of the camera. <coughs> Another thing you can do is you can use it for OECF measurements. OECF stands for optoelectronic conversion function, and the OECF is described in an ISO standard, 14524. Um, and that basically uses a grayscale with a very high contrast. In this case, it's a million to one or over a million to one. And you can take a picture of, of, these, of this grayscale and determine the dynamic range from there, the noise performance, the sensitivity of your camera, and all what the OECF is, uh, 
is designed for. Another aspect is using it for color. So we have a color chart here. And as mentioned, when you use a color chart that is a transmissive chart illuminated from the back, you get a wider color gamut than you can get from reflective charts. Um, and that's why in this case we use a transmissive color chart. And you can take a picture of that with your camera and you run it through an analysis um, and you can see how far off your camera is or how it needs to be corrected depending on what you want to do. 